Our vote counting is underway in South Africa after Wednesday's election. President Cyril Ramaphosa is seeking a second term, but polls indicate the ruling ANC, which ushered in the end of white minority rule 30 years ago, may have its days numbered. Many South Africans particularly frustrated with high rates of unemployment, which hover at around 33%. Final uh, election results are due out this Sunday. Joey Mil Jamin, file this report. Long after Wednesday's 9 p.m. deadline, and lines of South African voters could still be seen snaking their way into polling stations across the country. Spirits remained high, though, as voters participated in the democratic process. Our vote is something that we fought for, so I will definitely wait here for as long as it takes to vote. Here on Robben Island, the same prison that once held Nelson Mandela, Bongeka Nglanga voted for the first time. Freedom was, I can say, birth in this island. So being here and voting here is just such a great thing ever. While passing without serious incident, the day was still checkered by protests, power outages and lengthy technical delays, as voters also became confused over the amount of choices available. Nonetheless, election officials made note of the turnout. It will probably be well uh, beyond what we had, uh, the 66% we had in 2019. One of those in a more bullish mood was the country's president, Solo Ramaphosa, as he dropped his ballot in Soweto. The people of South Africa will give the ANC, as they vote today, a firm majority. There isn't even a doubt about that. Recent polls, though, have put the ruling ANC at less than 50% for the first time since 1994, leaving others with a kingmaker role in their sights. For the first time in 30 years, there's an opportunity for change in South Africa at a government level. We are here to take over government. That's where our target is. With counting underway, final results are likely to be known by Sunday, after which Parliament has two weeks to choose South Africa's next president. We can now bring in Daniel Silk, uh, Director of the Political Futures Consultancy, who joins us from Cape Town. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24 today. Now, there was not a long time ago where the ANC were real heroes in South Africa. I mean, this party ushered in the end of white minority rule. What happened? Well, I think uh, the country has suffered under extensive corruption over the course of the last 10, 15 years. State capture has taken its toll. And of course, this has affected service delivery. The state-owned enterprises have been unable to provide uh, a reliable electricity. The transportation company has not been able to provide uh, reliable rail services. The roads have potholes and there is exceptionally high unemployment, one of the highest levels in the world. And I think in the end, voters are beginning to react and they're beginning to blame the governing ANC for these deficiencies. And who is the ANC up against? Because it seems that the opposition is kind of fractured. The opposition has been fractured. We've seen a multitude of additional political parties, new players on the political scene. Uh, the ANC's uh, classic enemy has been the Democratic uh, Alliance, uh, a moderate centrist party, uh, a more uh, leftist uh, Marxist uh, party called the Economic Freedom Fighters. But the big challenge of this year, particularly in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, has been former President Jacob Zuma's new party, uh, Umkontowe Siswe. And that is decimating the ANC vote, particularly amongst Zulu voters in that KZN province. OK, I want to talk about Jacob Zuma for a second here, because a lot of the ANC's problems are linked to Jacob Zuma's presidency. Given that, how is it that he is taking votes away from the ANC? Well, I think there's a protest vote, certainly, among sectors of South Africa against uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and the leadership of Ramaphosa. But I think when we look back on this election and we analyze the results, we may well see that the support for Jacob Zuma's party and for Jacob Zuma is very much more of an ethnic or tribal vote in South Africa, since Zuma derives most of his support from the Zulu uh, ethnic group, most populous in KwaZulu-Natal. And I think we're seeing a reversion back to ethnic-based identification politics within South Africa, and that probably would explain his good showing. Now, if the polls are right, of course, South Africa is headed for uncharted territory. Does the opposition, once they do come together, will they have what it takes to fix many of South Africa's problems, including crime, corruption, uh, power outages, and as you said, that unemployment rate that is incredibly high at, what, 33%, 32.9%? 
Uh, yeah, in fact, that unemployment rate is higher, much higher even amongst young South Africans, over 50%. Look, there's a long way to go here in deciding who the next government is going to going to be. The ANC will be the largest party. It's going to fall below 50%. It will need to choose whether it's going to go with the leftist Marxist grouping or whether it's going to go with the centrist, more pro-business grouping. That's going to ultimately uh, set the course for South African economic policy and whether we rescue the country or begin a process of rescuing the country or, in fact, deteriorate further into populist policies uh, there's no decision yet on how that government is going to be comprised. We'll wait for the final results. Because, of course, fixing things like unemployment takes a lot of time. No new government is going to come with a magic wand and, and things will get better automatically. No, you're quite right. Uh, the deficiencies in the state in delivery are real. Uh, this is a, a medium term project. I think that if uh, South Africans come together and there are partnerships between the state and the business community, you can begin a process of improving the life for South Africans and improving all of these services. But I have to say that that's a political decision. It depends on how the uh, government of the day is going to be constructed. When the governing party drops below 50 percent, it requires some sort of coalition partner. And choosing the right partner is really the critical critical issue and the unknown for South Africa at this stage. Now, if the polls are right and the ANC does in fact find itself uh, out of government for the first time in 30 years, uh, how does the party revive things? Well, I don't think it's going to be out of government. I think it's going to be a weaker government. It's going to be a 45% government because it will still be by far the largest political party in South Africa. So it will have the best chance of forming a government. The question is, and I think you rightly said, can it revive its fortunes? I think the ANC, I think I think South African politics has changed after this particular election. We've seen a fragmentation of the electorate across various ethnic, uh, cultural, uh, regional lines. Um, and I think that we entering now a more mixed um, coalition style of politics in South Africa, more akin actually to many European countries who have coalitions fragmented and messy as they are. And it may well be not possible for the ANC to restore itself to being that big uh, hegemonic power that it was for the last 30 years. Would you say jobs you topped voters' minds as they headed to the polls across ages, not just the youth? Yeah, I think jobs were the number one issue. Corruption certainly has been, uh, again, uh, one of the top issues. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, the lights have gone out in South Africa due to power blackouts uh, over the course of the last 18 months, these are these are all concerns for South Africans. It's really um, a disappointment in the inability of government to deliver and uh, the disappointment in the lack of opportunity that's available to so many South Africans. Daniel, I think we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today.